Hi everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. We're on another road trip, um, heading north up to Ithaca, visit my folks, and I always stop at this shop here on the border, and uh, the owner, he always has some interesting vehicles for us to diagnose. So today, 2012 GMC Sierra, this thing has 215,000 miles, check engine lights on, it can't pass the New York State emissions inspection, it's been a few months now. Uh, Bill here, he said it was setting lean codes, the purge solenoid uh, circuit code, he tried bidirectionally commanding it, it would not click, mass airflow sensor code. Um, so I told him, you know, before I came down, I'm like, just try blowing through the purge solenoid, see if that's, if it's just stuck open like a lot of GMs are at higher miles. And uh, so he replaced it with an aftermarket one, and now the lean codes went away. However, some of the codes did not go away. Let's see what those are. So we have a uh, P0011, 102, 443, and then 13 and 452. So five codes. There's the mass airflow code. There's the EVAP purge control circuit code. Camshaft performance, he didn't say anything about that, so not exactly sure what's going on there. And intake air, fuel tank pressure. So let's jump right into... GM and I mean there's five coats here is it five separate problems let's see uh, if these are stored codes or active codes and kind of uh, go after the big fish first so the strategy today is uh, you see it's 21 degrees outside do as much research and testing from the driver's seat because the truck runs we have nice heat in here before we go under the hood do any electrical checks so the cold makes you work more smart and efficient. So let's jump into engine computer and again read fault codes and here we have a more detailed description. So for example, last test failed slash current, mass airflow sensor failed current, evap control is current, and then intake air that passed and fuel tank pressure sensor that passed. Okay, so we have three current codes, mass airflow, EVAP, and this camshaft position system performance. Uh, that one, it's a performance code, not a circuit code. So let's start with the easy ones to check, mass airflow and purge control solenoid. Now, if we go into live data, and let's just select you know, the fuel trims, intake manifold pressure, there's our mass airflow, map sensor, short term trims, engine speed, engine oil pressure. So you can see the long term trims are almost at zero, short term trims are almost at zero. It revs up great. Mass airflow stuck at zero grams per second. Engine oil pressure seems to be fine. So indeed, mass airflow is just not putting out any signal. So confirmed, that is a current code. Let's look up some wiring diagrams for the mass airflow sensor and the perch solenoid, see if they have anything in common, and go from there. We want to do the easiest checks first. All right, OEM diagram. Here's our mass airflow sensor. And the power feed comes from engine fuse four, 15 amp. Then two signal wires might be temperature and airflow, then a ground and a ground. Okay, yeah, there's our intake air temp sensor. So I think that the owner of the truck has replaced the mass airflow sensor three times. <laughs> and right now it does have an OEM AC Delco unit on it. So we're going to work with that. So the, uh, right off the bat, I want to check this 
engine fuse, ENG fuse number 4, 15 amp. Let's look at the purge solenoid. So EVAP controls. Here's our EVAP canister purge solenoid valve. Guess what? It's fed by the same fuse. I like it. Engine fuse 4, 15 amp. So number one check is that fuse. Now what else does that fuse feed? It, you know, it splits off. Uh, I pulled up the power distribution diagram, ENG fuse. Here it is, and depending on the RPO, it can go different places. There's our mass airflow. There's our purge solenoid valve. So gas engine, if it's not an LU3. So I did take a picture of the RPO codes in the glove box. And we do not have, see, LC9, right? There is no HP2, K, F, G, and then J. So we don't have that, 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 or that. So just these two things are on that fuse. Let's grab a test light and see if that fuse is blown. Alright, here we go. Here's the underhood fuse box. We got a test light connected to battery ground. And fuse number four is going to be the first one in this row. So make sure the test light works. Don't want to skip any steps. And let's just check the neighboring fuse. That's good. That's good. There it is. Blown fuse. Let's pop that sucker out and install a 5 amp test light. You know, indeed it is blown, but why? Alright, here we go. We got 5 amps. No light. Definitely connected. Let's, uh, let's see if that data pit came back for the mass airflow sensor. All right, key on. Let's clear out these fault codes. Okay. Right off the bat, let's read the fault code. Did it instantly set? Okay, so it still doesn't like EVAP emissions uh, perch control solenoid circuit. Fine. Let's um, let's read the data stream. Engine data, mass airflow. Mass airflow still shows zero. Let's start it up. Okay, so it did not fix it. Ooh, it stalled out. Interesting. Make sure our lights did not illuminate. Uh, let me get those in the shot. All right, success. We got mass airflow reading. And our test light did not even flicker or anything. These sensors don't draw that many amps. So could there be a intermittent wiring short? Maybe, maybe not. We'll have to take this truck on a test drive. But the blown fuse, explain two of the current codes. Let's scan for codes one more time. Hey look, that one passed, so maybe my test light wasn't making a good connection at the fuse. Um, clear that out. Okay, so no codes. Let's shut it off. Let it go to sleep. Nice throttle response. Read codes one more time. No trouble codes right now. Um, let's take a quick look at this camshaft actuator data. 
you know, command, angle, variance, desired, oil pressure sensor, So I'm going to put it in gear. So this variant should stay pretty close to zero. Look, the camshaft is not advancing. The CMP active counter is working. So is, is it going to set the P0011? Oil pressure seems fine. I'm just going to keep it here for about 10 seconds, just power break it, and see if it sets that code. Nope, no trouble codes. So at this point, we can do a quick wiggle check, make sure the test light doesn't flicker. You know, look at the wiring harness, make sure there's no shorts between the fuse box and the purge solenoid and the mass airflow sensors. And then pop in the 50 amp, 15 amp fuse and let the owner drive it, take it through a drive cycle. Those are, that was the main customer complaint. Otherwise, it seems to run pretty well. We got a special treat today, a 1988 Toyota Land Cruiser from Washington State. It was shipped here to upstate New York and uh, the owner says it ran for a few minutes, it was leaking coolant, overheated, shut it down, and then it was a crank no start. So I'll show you guys. Crank no start. I mean, pretty cool, huh? It has the four liter inline six fuel injected engine. So 1988, this is very, almost the same era as the Toyota MR2. First thing I wanna do, since this thing was probably sitting for, you know, 20 years somewhere, is fuel pump operation. They said if you spray starting fluid, it will fire up and run, but sounds like a fuel delivery problem. So super easy to get to the fuel pump in the back. Uh, let's take a look at a wiring diagram real quick and do a basic check. Hopefully we'll find something interesting. So this is the schematic for the entire power management system. I'm just interested in fuel pump. So familiar Toyota setup, circuit opening relay, fuel pump, ground. So red and green wire, white and black. There's also a wire that goes to this check connector, it says FP. So when this relay closes and the fuel pump should energize, we should see voltage on FP. Let's, uh, let's have Bill, the shop owner here, crank it. We'll check for voltage there. If we have that, we'll go right for the fuel pump and measure the amperage through the pump and see if it actually spins over. All right, so the check connector lives right here. And if you guys can see, the FP pin is going to be in this bottom right corner. So let's hook up a test light. Battery ground there. It finds a positive. One amp test light's going to light up. So I'm going to connect the adapter into that pin. And we're just going to look at the test light while we crank the engine over. Let's do that real quick. You see the test light through the crack? Okay, so we have voltage on the FP pin. Now what I want to do with the key off, let's check continuity. We'll feed voltage in here and see if it goes through the fuel pump. 
So all we need to do, put this on battery positive. Look, our test light lights up. We can feed more voltage into here. So let's do five amps. It's a nice bright light. Now, I want to use the amp clamp. Go to the trunk. Here's our fuel pump. There's that red and green wire. Let's look at the amperage going through the pump. Look at that, five amps, that's my test light. And the pump is not spinning. Okay, so now, last check. We'll disconnect the test light and just crank the truck and see what the maximum amperage is on this pump. If it doesn't spin, it's mechanically seized inside the tank. Not surprising. Kind of like the, uh, the Audi Quattro. Uh, exact same scenario. So this will be a pretty quick diagnosis. Alright Bill, whenever you're ready, crank it for five seconds. Alright, we're good. So we saw about 13 amps on that fuel pump. It's not spinning. It's mechanically seized. What do you think about this truck, Bill? Ah, it's, it's old and it's kind of rough looking. It's kind of rough. Okay. Are you looking forward to working on it? Oh, I just can't wait. It's just... My favorite friend. I'm going to work on it for my favorite buddy. Okay. Okay. I want to see this thing back on the road. It's going to be pretty sweet. It will be. <laughs> All right, that's it for this one. Once Bill gets the fuel pump in here, we'll see if it starts and runs. I might be back here in a month or so.